to What's Up in the Sky in December of 2025 with me, Lead Night Sky Ranger Jeff. December arrives this year featuring dueling delights of Jupiter and Saturn. In addition, Comet 3i Atlas makes a very quick and short appearance before disappearing into the darkness of the Milky Way. Mercury achieves greatest elongation on the 7th. Rising around 0530, it precedes the Sun by a good 90 minutes, achieving an almost 15 degree separation from the Sun. Mercury has a disk size of 5.8 arc seconds and is shining at magnitude minus 0.52 and will be 80% illuminated on the morning of the 15th. Venus is approaching conjunction and not visible. Our object on the moon is Crater Grimaldi. Look for it in the far west just a tad south of the equator on the 3rd. The sun's rays will just be illuminating the walls. The next night, the 4th floods the basin with light and reveals the crater walls of Riccoli. The pummeled walls are a testament to its age. Note the difference in the crater floors, Grimaldi being relatively smooth and the rougher Riccoli. The difference is caused by the lava flooding of Grimaldi when Oceanus Procellarum was flooded. Riccoli was just too far away to get that effect. Mars is approaching conjunction and is not visible. Ceres is our asteroid of the month. You will find this minor planet in Cetus the Whale to the left and slightly below Saturn in the southern sky at 40 degrees up from the horizon. Consult the Minor Planet Center for its exact location. Jupiter rises in the east at 2000 on the 1st and 1800 at the end of the month. This puts it firmly in the easy to observe category. The Galilean moons transit across the planet several times and I will list them in the calendar of events. Check out moments of clarity to observe not only the great red spot, but also the never-ending hurricanes in both the north and southern equatorial belts. Saturn rises in the southern sky about halfway up the sky to the south. It is the brightest object in the area at first magnitude. The rings begin to open up as they go from a mere 0.4 degrees to 1 degree by the end of the month. Titan is clearly visible. The other inner moons, Rhea, Tethys, and Dione, can be seen in dark skies. During October, we were able to, on different nights, see Rhea and Tethys. Dione remained invisible. Uranus rises in the east, its blue disk clearly visible in small telescopes or binoculars. You will find it in Taurus the Bull, 26 degrees above the horizon on the 15th at 1800. An hour later, Orion will appear. Uranus shines at magnitude 5.6 with a diameter of 3.8 arc seconds. Neptune lies close to Saturn, shining at magnitude 7.7. .7. At 2.8 billion miles, its size is a mere 2 arc seconds, which is typical for it from our vantage point on Earth. Do check it out and complete your viewing of all the major planets. Comet 24P, Shaumas, is our Comet of the Month. Look for it particularly while observing the Geminids. On the 1st, it's near NGC 3227. On the 12th, near NGC 3626, 3607, and 3608. The Comet is expected to be about a magnitude 9 to 12. Its blue ion tail may not be visible, as it will be behind in relation to the Sun and us. Make use of a camera to try and capture it. By the way, NGC 3607 is a quasar. The Geminid meteor shower peaks on the 14th, but are active from the 4th to the 17th. At its peak, expect up to 100 meters per hour. As usual, you will want to view the peak in the morning hours after 0200. Also occurring this month are the Ursids, active from the 17th to the 26th, peaking on the 22nd. In both cases, the moon is not a deterrent. The Ursids are, however, much less in quantity, so expect about 10 meteors per hour. However, the Ursids being circumpolar will be visible all night long. 
Pisces the Fish is our constellation of the month. You will find it riding high in the southern sky after sunset. Contained within it is Messier 74, the Phantom Galaxy. M74 shines at magnitude 9.4 and covers an area of 10.5 by 9.5 minutes of arc. It was discovered by Pierre Machane in September of 1780. Our question of the month is a common one I have gotten. Why do we always see the same side of the moon? The moon is tidally locked. What does that mean? When the earth and moon were both young and the moon was molten lava, it had tides just like earth and it had a considerable spin. But as time progressed, the torque caused by Earth's gravity on the Moon gradually pulled the tidal hump into alignment with the Earth, slowing both the Moon's and Earth's rotation rate. The Moon still has escape velocity, and it's slowly, at one and a half inches per year, pulling away. So the effect will gradually diminish, but the Moon will remain tidally locked. Don't forget to take a quick look if you get a chance to see the Three Eye Atlas um, interloper in our inner solar system. It should appear in the early days of December, but will only be visible for about two weeks, and only if we're really lucky we'll get a chance to see it. It is zipping past us and going back out into outer space. Here is the calendar of events. Here is your orrery. Here's the music that I have used. And now for the dad joke. What is the sun's favorite way to exercise? On the solar cycle. Of course. Go out and enjoy the cool, crisp nights of December as we end up the year of 2025.